Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel and today uh, I'm actually going to do the unboxing uh, video for the parcel which arrived for me on Friday uh, which is in video diary uh, day 110. So let's crack it open and see what uh, goodies are inside. Have a look. So obviously we've got plenty of packaging, which is encouraging, which means that hopefully nothing's got damaged in transit. Um, there we are. So yes, well done to those who guessed that the box was indeed from Hatton's model railway shop. And in here we should have one, two, three Andrew Barclays. And I also got the three sets um, of the driver and fireman uh, in typical NCB clothing um, that they've had commissioned by, I think it's Model, model U or Model U 3D. Um, so I'll be painting those up and fitting those into the Barclays at a later date and that'll go on as another video a bit later on. But they look pretty good. So, as I said, I've got three of the Andrew Barclays, so I'll now get rid of the other box and open each one in turn and let's see what's inside. Right. So starting with the first one, I've not actually had these open, I don't know which one's in which, although there is a label on the end, and apparently this one should be the model of Little Barford, so... Good sturdy box with nice foam packaging. Uh, looks like a little information sheet there. There's all the details on it and you know, care, care of use and so on and so forth. Um, and that, so I'll have a read through that later. And then obviously we've got the main packaging itself. Uh, then the rest of the box is just lined out with foam, which is quite nice. And I can see in there, and I hope that you can as well, I'll just zoom the camera in a bit and bring it up. But we've got extra detailing parts, uh, such as coupling hooks and some vacuum pipes, the brakes. Um, and you can see just about hopefully through there that it is the Little Barford locomotive. So if I just hopefully push it out one way or the other through the outer packaging. It's a bit stiff. There we go. Put that to one side. Just carefully put those detailing bits to one side as well so they don't get damaged. And it opens up as you'd expect, and there's a sort of a plasticky cloth on it. And oh my word, that is beautiful. That is absolutely stunning. Well, I'm going to reposition the camera because you need to see this. That, that is absolutely stunning. So let's just carefully pull it out, pack it so we can actually have a proper look at it. There we are. So this is the Little Barford locomotive, which was um, one of the power station uh, locomotives. Um, yeah, and I wanted it because it's a little bit different with having the wash stripes on the, the front of it and on the back as well. You can see that back. Uh, that is absolutely stunning as a model. That that really is. And I think uh, with some nice cast uh, plates on it there and obviously the crew fitted in and a few other little detailing items and a very light weathering I think that'll be produce a, an, an absolutely stunning model. Uh, I mean, the second part of this video will be uh, test running all three of them against my kit built one, which you can, you should be able to see in one of my previous videos where I think I was actually lining it out. Um, and we'll be able to uh, compare um, how it all, how they com well, just the comparison between them all. So that is a wonderful little Barford. So I'm just going to pop him back in his box. 
And we can have a look at one of the others. Back in there. I must say that it, they are incredibly well packaged and really you sort of expect that these days from most ready to run manufacturers. Um, you expect good packaging. Right. And it should you know, keep the locomotives safe for many years to come when they're not in use. Uh, usually, particularly when I'm not using any of my particular engines, they do generally um, go back in the boxes so they're nice and safe so we know where they are uh, and so on. So let's open this one, which apparently is the NCB green one. So I'm hoping it's going to be a similar state of repair, which it does look like. Let's zoom the camera out a little bit so you can see. Um, so again, before starting with the foamy stuff, instruction sheets, and then the actual locomotive inside, the phone box, and again, it looks like we've got the little detailing pack in the top there, so I'll just push this one out as well, hopefully. Whew. I can tell these haven't been out of the box. The packaging is very stiff. So, yes, so little bag on top. And yes, again, you've got uh, two coupling hooks and a couple of vacuum pipes as well, which we'll probably go on that later today. Open up the packet. This should be a green one, which looks like it is. Ooh, wow. Wow, wee. That is. Just as nice in the old furnace, if not nicer than Little Barford. Look at that, let's just zoom in a bit so you can really see this. Now, this is um, obviously a National Coal Board locomotive, uh, number six, uh, finished in the green. And again, I think the um, it'll just finish off nicely with a cast set of uh, builder's plates on it. Uh, well, that is again absolutely stunning and this one is one of the ones with the the open cab back and hopefully you'll be able to see now you can see all the cab details so you've got the uh, regulator in the middle there and the, the reverser so it's obviously right hand drive and a few other details and things in there and you can see the uh, the glazing in there for the windows but for normal viewing heights you wouldn't see that so that's not a problem uh, and the very very fine little handbrake here and just just about make out hopefully uh, it is very, very fine, that. Around the other side. Yeah, that is, uh, again, an absolutely outstanding model, that, that really is. And, as I said, I'll be comparing all three of them against um, the kit-built one that I've already got. Uh, so I'll actually have a fleet of four Andrew Barclay 040s in total, which will be quite nice. Yes, that's, uh, again, a very, very nice little model. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to have lots of fun with a little bit of very, again, so just some gentle weathering on it, uh, to, just to show that it's in sort of use. So I'll just, again, pop that one back in its box, and it seems to have a little bit more of that uh, plasticky wrap stuff to it. So. Careful when we put all that away. And then it should leave us with one more darkly by my account. Back in there. there to get that. And finally, we have this one. I'm going to not actually tell you which one it is, I'm going to wait for, leave it as a bit of a surprise for you. Let's leave it out again. And again, obviously the instruction manual. There. Let's pull that out. Found the back. And again, we've got the, the detailing back in the top, so that's quite good. That box is going to a bit easier. Nothing broke then, it was just the packaging all stretching apart. So, here we are. Oh, oh my word. 
Oh, dearie me. Good lord. <laughs> so there we are. Again, the other National Coal Board locomotive. Let me add into focus a bit more for you. Ayrshire area number 10. And again, that is absolutely stunning. The lining on that is unbelievable. That really is. And again, I'm going to get some cast plates for it. Um, uh, what you can see on this one, we've also got additional steps here for the tank. And there's also a little mechanical lubricator on this side. Uh, this one has a closed uh, back to the cab, but has the opening for the handbrake. Um, pull it round again. Uh, again, we've got the steps again on this side. But that is just uh, like the others, an absolutely stunning model and again I think with some gentle weathering and a few more extra detailing bits to separate it from everybody else's that's going to produce uh, it's just going to be a, it's a lovely model in, in itself it doesn't need any more but just to give it that extra little bit I will uh, like I say detail it up and I will uh, test them out um, on the shunting layout against the other one So let's pop that one back in its box and then we're ready to run them upstairs and get the shunting layout out and uh, we can have a play with a few wagons and see how well they run and we can get it back in the box. That will ease up with time I hope. That, uh, Detailing back on the top there. There we go. As we do this, pop it in the box. So there we are. That's three Andrew Barclay locomotives from Hattons unboxed. Now just got to go and give him a test run. The Andrew Barclay that you can see in front of you is um, the ARC uh, resin models kit um, which uh, graphs onto the uh, Hornby or Dapol LMY Pug chassis. Uh, it's a kit that I made up, must be about two years or so ago now, um, because at the time it was the only, um, in, well one of the few industrial uh, locomotive kits that you could get uh, in double O gauge and obviously now with Hatton's bringing out um, these new Andrew Barclays in some ways um, my kit built one is unfortunately um, of, a, of a completely different standard but because I spent such a lot of time building it and, and lining it out which you will see in a, pre in a previous video um, you know, and weathered it and detailed it, it's a to me it's a lovely little engine and always used to um, grab people's attention when I was out on the exhibition circuit with one of the layouts uh, purely because it was so different because nobody else had you know, an Andrew Barclay saddle tank. Um, like I say it is a resin kit built locomotive and it went together incredibly well and I've added further details to it such as the oil cans and lamps and things to it and obviously the crew and it's a good little runner um, when the wheels are clean it's not had a clean for a while because we've not had the layout out for quite a while um, but it's a lovely little engine and now is the time to sort of compare it to the new locomotives which I've just got um, so I'm going to put on little Barford first and we're just going to see first of all 
how we uh, how it runs. So I'll zoom the camera out and set everything up, and we'll be able to hopefully see little Barford make his first moves. So hopefully now I'll be able to see that little Barford is on the layout. Uh, so this is the short shunting layout I've got uh, called Rin Exchange. It's basically um, based on the ingle nook sidings principle. Um, it has featured in a couple of my other videos previous to this. Um, so let's um, see if we can get uh, little Barford to move. There we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see there as well as I can see that um, Little Barford seems to move quite happily, nice and steady as well. It's not juddering about too much. If it is, it's possibly a bit of dirt on the points, but I've not actually oiled any of these Barclays up yet, so and I've not had them on the rollers. This is literally the first time I've seen them move. Um, so I'm quite pleased that uh, is moving. Quite happily. Uh, like I say, I'll need to oil him up and uh, detail and things up a bit later and get him running properly. But I'm quite pleased with that. So I'll, again, I'll just I'll adjust the camera down so you can get a slightly better view of him moving back and forth. Well, safe to say, I'm very impressed with Little Barford, and it is, as I said earlier, it's a lovely, lovely little model, and I think a suitable amount, a little bit of gentle weathering, the crew added, and a few other details, and this will uh, make him a little bit more individual to everybody else's. Well, I'm very, very pleased with that one. Uh, now, obviously, I need to test all three, uh, so I'm going to 
take the Barford off and I'm going to put the green NCB number 6 uh, locomotive on. Now this is the one with the open backed cab and another point as well is that all uh, of my Andrew Barthes are all non-DCC. I'm, I'm very much old hat I'm afraid I don't have DCC. Um, I don't really know why, I've just never really bothered with it in the past so uh, and I've got quite a lot of engines so I don't really want to upgrade um, but it's one of those I have said if I was starting afresh then I would uh, obviously go DCC uh, but I'm not so everything is all old age analogue I'm afraid so I'll just reposition the camera and we can have a look at number six hopefully moving And again, like Little Barford, number six seems to move very, very well, nice and smooth as well, which is good. And obviously with the open-backed cab, which you can probably see really well now, um, once I've got the crew added in, that will add a, a suitable amount of extra detail in there, and it will certainly improve it somewhat, but I'm quite pleased with that, so we'll go and see if we can shunt a couple of wagons around now. Quite conveniently, I've actually got my uh, rake of Backman NCB internal user only uh, 16 ton mineral wagons, and I'm quite pleased that Oxford Rail have decided to bring out uh, some of these as well. So I'll be getting some of those to add to the collection uh, for when I eventually get round to actually building the colliery layout of which uh, obviously these are going to be of uh, great importance and use. The slow speed of these is really very, very good and is to be as expected with modern um, locomotives from the manufacturers these days. It, it is sort of expected to, for them to run very, very well at slow speeds, uh, and that even without DCC, and I'm very pleased with how these are running so far. And I can see it, certainly see that there's probably not going to be much in the way of problems with them in the future because we're only going to be sort of trundling along at a nice slow speed for most of the time. So yes, I'm very happy again with number six. So I'll shunt him out of the way and we can have a go with our final Hatton's Andrew Barclay, which is the NCB number 10 from the Ayrshire area in Scotland. And hopefully that will run just as well as the other two. So here we go with number 10, 
And again, this like uh, little Barford is um, closed cab. Um, again, seems to run rather well. Now, I really do love the livery on this. The application of the lining is absolutely outstanding. It really is. Um, and when I compare it against photographs that I've got of this one, um, it's pretty much bob on. So I'm very, very pleased with it uh, in appearance. And looking you know, at how it's running, I'm probably going to be equally as pleased with its uh, running performance as well as it seems to so far seems to match the other two, which, is, which are very, very good. So I'll just give it a quick run around with a few wagons. So just as with the other two, I'm very very pleased with this one, and I'm you know, very pleased that I got it. And it's, it is just an absolutely outstanding model. All three of them are, and I'm sure I'm going. I'm going to have many many hours of happy running time uh, with all three of them on uh, the various layouts that I have, uh, or that I've certainly got planned anyway. Um, so yes, if you want one of these Andrew Barclays, or have even have a slight interest in the industrial steam era, then go and get one. It's you know for just under a hundred pounds. It's a fantastic little model, and it's well, it's just absolutely brilliant. So go and get one.
So there we are. That concludes my little review of the Hattons Andrew Barkley 040 uh, saddle tank locomotives. And as I said, if you have even have a vague interest in industrial steam, um, get one. Or if you're planning a colliery layout or any other industrial area on your model railway, go and get one of these. They're absolutely fantastic model. They run incredibly well, even on normal DC. Um, I can't um, I can't praise them enough. So well done, Hattons. And until the next review, I'll see you then.